Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got Jeannie, the go giver, Morum. How are you, Jeannie? Great. Thank you. We've got Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland, how are you doing? Rawr. Doing good. Man, I, I, I never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> the the, the girl. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. What's up, Eric? Just hanging out with a couple of good friends. I love it. We've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. What's up, Mike? Hey, how's it going, Mark? I'm doing well. Hey, everybody. Good, good. Pretty much. I, we got, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. What's up, Tate? How much? And last, but certainly not least, you know him, you love him, the professor, the brain, <laughs> Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, Scott has a pretentious hard stop. So we, we got to get through this podcast within that time. And um, already Tate is hazing Zeno about his haircut. Mike, I like the haircut. So do I. I wasn't oh, by act. It was an accident. I went in, the guy was like, new guy. He's like, what do you want me to do? I go, oh, I'll just, he goes, he said something. I go, yeah, yeah. I turn around, I look at Laura. He's like, <laughs> start sweating <laughs> going down my brow. <laughs> not the top, not the top. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with getting the top cut short. Trust me. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you know, I I, I like it. I, I like think you it. look handsome. Oh, thank you. It happened to me too because I went in, got my hair cut, and the guy's like, "Yeah, just the same as usual." I was like, "Yep, yep." And he started. He went up on the side and he did it, and he didn't have the guard on, and it had a zero, and so it was like, Zzz. and my hair is so light that I look, you know, totally bald. So. <laughs> It was good, but it grew in nice. I mean, now right, my hair's Mark, You guys got to get the look. We're, you got to join the crew. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not afraid. It's, you know, I either get the Zane or I just let age take care of it for me. So <laughs> no worries. All right, well, let's, let's move on to today's first topic. Bearland Aaron, what do you got going on, man? What's today's topic? Well, it's something that's come up to me recently so I thought it was a good discussion um, how much should you avoid buying within a city limits or not and why Jeannie and um, yeah go ahead how much should you avoid buying in city limits and why what do you think what are your, what are your thoughts on that first of all have you ever done a deal within the city limits no and that's what I was gonna say um, I don't really have an opinion on that, but I've actually, I actually go to my properties that I buy um, and I know they're not in the city limits. So uh, I, I don't, I've never done it before. So don't have any really input on that one. Okay. All right. Uh, Eric, the technician, what is your technical analysis? I, I'm not sure I've bought a property within the city limits. Um, but then again, it's not something I really check on a regular basis. I mean, we try to assign an address or as close to an address to our properties as we can. Um, so usually we just look at Google Maps and you know it says San Luis, Colorado or whatever it might say. And um, you know we'll name the street and the, the city that Google Maps tells us. But I honestly, um, I, I I would say I probably have not bought a property within the city limits, but I don't know that I'd be against it. I would expect to probably pay more, um, but, but yeah. 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 Zen master. Yes. I would say we have. Um, I think that they tend to be cash buyers uh, because, you know, just the nature of the lot. Um, but um I, I think the beautiful thing about our business is that you perfect this model and then you've got options. You can do whatever you want with it. You own it. Right. And so we each do the business model, the same way, you know, the, the steps, the five plates that Scott Todd teaches, but then you can literally pick this model up and move with it wherever you want. Now you have to keep in mind which one, uh, 
that you have to, you know, if you don't want to move too many times, you need to rebuild your buyers list and all that type of stuff. But uh, yes, we do short answer. We have, and I believe they tend to be more cash sales. It's just, uh, but yeah, lower acceptance rate in those areas, right? And more, just uh, less to choose from, but it's still the same model is that we've learned, right? And you own it. You can do whatever you want with it. Right, right. You know, you know what uh, just happened? A big like jolt of happiness just shot through me because dude buddy scott bossman just joined the round table and if you guys don't know uh wow. the dude buddy is on the round table and i'm not going to put words in his mouth but i will say that it's possible scott bossman that this could be a, a regular thing for you yes it is i apologize for being late i didn't have the right zoom link tate helped me out there so yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing uh, more of me because I'm now a full-time land investor from home. Woo-hoo. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Scott Todd, are, are we just going to say it now? Let freedom ring, Scott Bossman. <laughs> we, we can, and I'm, and I'm glad that uh, Scott made that. But Mark, I got to tell you something. Like You just said that you got a shot of happiness, but... I'm kind of insulted. Like we all didn't bring you happiness when we got on. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Right. It's okay. It's, it's like kind of like when you go, you come home, right? After a while you start taking your home for granted, but then something new pops up in the house, right? You're like, Oh my gosh, this is like a new shiny, wonderful thing. You still love your house and all the things, right? But then that just new little thing is like, gives you a little jolt, right? I'm not sure I'm behind this, guys, but we'll, 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 okay, we'll just keep it it's, on. It's, it is definitely the hedonic treadmill, right? You get a new car, then you get used to the car. Like in two weeks, I'll be like, yeah, and dude, buddy's got Bossman's on the round table. Right? It'll just be a regular thing. We'll get used to it. All right, so let's pick on, on Scott because the topic, Scott, is – have you done any deals within the city limits? I actually have done a few deals within city limits. I think my second and third purchases were within city limits. Uh, I would just have to say, and they were terms deals and they're actually still going um, for me. Three, they're like five year uh, deals. Um, I would just say, uh, be careful in your due diligence and make sure there aren't any other city ordinance, ordinances or city availability fees that there could be liens on or, or back fees on. Uh, I work in one area where they have a you know, $100 a year uh, sewer and water fee. And in my due diligence, I learned that you know, the prior owner had not uh, uh, paid those in three years. Uh, nor their back taxes in three years. So that was a huge negotiating point for me uh, in those deals. All right, great, great. Uh, Big Papa, what are your, uh, what's your take on the, on, the city, on the city lots? You know, I'm, I think I've done a few deals in those areas. Um, I remember a long time ago, I did do one and I forgot to check and see if this city had any sort of ordinance regarding like mowing the lawn. And the person hadn't been mowing their lawn for like five years. So there's a bunch of fees that kind of were associated with that. But I was able to get those uh, kind of renegotiated down and, and paid them off and had somebody go out and take care of the property. And then I flipped it and got it off my, my plate ASAP. So, yeah, I would echo what uh, kind of everyone else has said on the call. I do deals where other land investors are. And if that's in a city where I get to know the code and the ordinances, then I've got no problem doing it. All right. Great. Great. And I have a feeling Jeannie Morum actually made this happen. She started thinking to herself, you know, I love the round table, but it kind of sucks. I'm the only woman. And oh. all of a sudden the <laughs> terrorist hunter shows up. Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Great. How are you? Great. Great. So Mimi, you said you're just jumping in. The question was, have you done any deals within city limits? And if not, would you do a deal within the city limits? No, one of my counties is it, the area subdivision that I'm in is in the city. And just like any area that you're in, you have to know the 
due diligence for that area. I bought a property that at one point had a lien on it for trash on it. Um, so in Sydney's right, you have more neighbors, um, more things like that to worry about. But no, it's absolutely fine. You just have to learn the specifics, what to watch for in that particular area. Like in Florida, you know, I have to watch for scrub jays and flood zones, whereas out west, I have to look at access and things like that instead. Okay. All right. Uh, Scott Todd, how about you? Um, I haven't necessarily avoided um, avoided them, but uh, I really haven't bought any in the cities. I, I recently did buy two of them. Um, they're in a city and I kind of, it's kind of a weird story. I didn't go out look, even looking for them. What happened was um, a, lady, a lady who bought land from me, uh, she bought 13 properties from me a few years ago. And then basically uh, after four months, she gave us all but one back. So she gave us back 12 properties. Long story, night, kind of a nightmare customer, but um, for a while, I mean, it was nice with her, her paycheck alone was, was pretty sweet. But then what happened was, was she was just buying some like crazy properties um, and she, she had a cash crunch, so she needed to sell. And so she called us up and she's like, Hey, you want to buy these? Uh, she gave us a, a bunch of them. A lot of them were upside down and we're like, no, but there were two city lots. And um, I think that Mike's somewhat right. Like in this particular area, I think it's de uh, dependent on the area, but like in this particular area, I think that they will end up being cash sales. So the sales time on it's a little bit longer. I think the, the um, kind of the marketing strategy is a little bit different than kind of that rural land. Rural land is, just kind of, I don't know, it's, it's easy. I think that people like that adventure. Whereas with city lots, people are really starting to think about like, do I really want to live here or build a house here? So it's a little bit of a different customer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my experience, I've, I've done, you know, city lot deals and, you know, certainly because I didn't have anybody like me helping me. Um, my first city lot deal had like hundreds of dollars in, in ordinances. Um, we had to mow the grass these are like deals in like Oklahoma. And, um, but what was interesting was they all sold. Um, I did another uh, deal like that in Texas. I got smarter with my due diligence, bought it right. They all sold really, really well. Um, I actually bought a couple commercial lots at a tax deed auction. And again, those sold. But just like what Scott was saying, I don't focus on them. They tend to be smaller. They tend to be more expensive. They tend to be more complicated. And so, you know, if you can pick them up, great, but I don't know if I would necessarily focus on them. Is, does anybody want to play devil's advocate and say, well, Mimi probably does, and say, well, what's wrong with focusing on them? Well, Mimi, you're on, you're on mute. Well, it's not my whole inventory. It's just a part of it. And it is a little more complicated. They're definitely more expensive. The taxes are a heck of a lot higher. Um, and, the, and the market, the customer is definitely different. They're looking for an investment or a piece of property to build a house on. It's not so much for recreation. So it's definitely a thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they're, they're great deals to, to hit the neighbors up on too. Yeah. So, you know, Jeannie, you know, I, I wouldn't say avoid them. I'm just not sure I would focus on them necessarily. I don't know. Mike, am I saying this right? I feel like it's, I'm giving a convoluted answer. I think you're saying it right. You just, you know, should your whole business be in that area? And uh, it sounds like everybody's saying no. I think they're agreeing. I think everybody's disagreeing. I think that, uh, you know, we talk about um, in the beginning, people focus on one or two areas, right? And, and I think, you know, even all of us, we don't go crazy in tons of areas, but it's good to have a sampling of different properties because different times of the year, some properties might sell quicker. As Scott alluded to, some some might be cash sales. They're going to take a little longer, but you have the term sales to fill in. So, no, I think we're all in alignment. And the whole Brady Bunch is here, all nine of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a total Brady Bunch. Um, by the way, do you know why uh, Scott Todd has a pretentious hard stop? Plane flight? Because today is the first time in flight school history we have a daytime class. I should know this is going to continue to go. So yeah. if you're an international investor, this is perfect for you. 
And if you're somebody that was like Scott Bossman, you got all the time in the world, you can do a day class. Phenomenal. I think the next thing we need is the translators. We need translators to come into these. We can start, you know, we can have a uh, I mean, Tate, Tate can, you know, it's fluent in Spanish. So we, we have it all covered, man. Our geeky group has got it covered. So I would say today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. And if you want to learn more about daytime classes, nighttime classes, classes to take flight, to accelerate, and have the greatest Sherpa on earth take you up that land investing mountain quickly, safely, efficiently, and make sure you actually execute on what you're learning, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and get on a call with the Zen master, Mike Zeno, or dude buddy, Scott Bossman. And certainly ask Scott, how the heck can I be like you and work whenever I want, with whom I want, wherever I want? Did I just say, wait, with who? Wait, the three W's. Where I want, with whom I want, when I want. There it is. All right. Um, Jeannie, you had the second topic. Well, you know, I'm sure the listeners know that I'm the only one here that's a coaching student, so I'm not a, I'm not a coach. And, and uh, I've noticed on the Facebook, oh, you too, Aaron? You're a co- Are you a coach, Aaron? I'm not a coach. Okay, good that I don't feel so alone. Good, okay. Um, that, that they're asking about attorneys, and because I'm a coaching student, if I had any questions about legal issues, I asked my coach. And um, some of my sellers have actually been attorneys, so they've made it really easy for me if I had any legal questions. So I'm wondering, because I've been a coaching student, or I am, I, I go to my coach and they help me. But at one point, does a land investor need an attorney? Um, do we need to have one, you know, all the time that we can call? Or, or do we just call an attorney when we need one? I don't know if that makes any sense. It, no, I think it makes sense, especially when you first start out, because you don't necessarily need an LLC. And of course, to set up an LLC properly, you might want to hire an attorney, right? As far as the deeds, you could certainly go to deeds that um, or the purchase sale agreement, the promissory note, the land sale contracts, just because we provide them doesn't necessarily mean that you're 100% comfortable with them. You might want to get a second opinion from your attorney. As issues come up, you might want to just have an attorney. So the question is where in sort of your business journey from startup to, you know, mature like Bearland Aaron, do you start engaging with attorneys. I'll give you an example. I called an attorney yesterday um, on an excess proceeds deal that we did. And so I've got nine grand sitting at the county. I've got a file for that county to collect the excess excess proceeds. I had to get an attorney involved to do that. Now, luckily it's just a paralegal, but I had to contact them for that issue. Um, Let's just go, because it's a technical question, to the technician, Eric Peterson. When do you think about hiring an attorney? Um, I think it's up to kind of each individual in a sense. I mean, what's, what's your comfort level with um, the tools that we provide you in terms of the, the document templates and whatnot and, and kind of what's your experience there? Um, I know myself, I, I did not have an attorney right away, um, but further down the road as my business grew, and I wanted to put certain things in place. Um, one of the, the major factors for me was just knowing that, um, you know, if I passed away that somehow my, my business would be able to be managed by my wife and, you know, or somebody else and, and how would all that happen? So, um, you know, at that point when I was prepared to go through that process is when I engaged an attorney to, to help me through some of that. Um, and then I think beyond that, it's just like, you know, if you have a need for anything, you know, if you have to get someone off your property or, you know, maybe you have some kind of probate situation that you're pursuing, um, things like that, you know, might be a good opportunity to reach out to an attorney, whether it's a local one or, um, you know, one somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Bearline Aaron, how about you? Well, I, 
I've used an attorney twice. Um, most, both of them were early on in the business. Um, obviously when we set up our LLC, I had, uh, an attorney here do that. And then, uh, also before I entered coaching, um, I was dealing with a, uh, some, a handful of properties or something in a trust. And then another couple that were, had some probate kind of things. And, you know, I didn't know anything at the time other than having gone through the toolkit. So, you know, I got a hold of attorney and he gave me some, you know, pro bono information, you know, talked to me on the phone for about half an hour, um, straightened me out about a couple of things. Um, and, you know, to the extent where I could make my decision, um, I haven't had to use one to pursue like a specific legal action, um, luckily, but I kind of think that, you know, if you're in real estate business long enough, that's probably an eventuality, um, you know, may not be a big deal or a severe thing, but you might have to get somebody off a property or you might have to have um, an attorney, you know, deal with the county on some issue that is just, you know, where you know, you can't be an expert on the law in every county and uh, in every kind of matter. So you need an expert, you know, um, and that's what they're for. You know, they're that expert when you are not. So um, I would say it's kind of the case, case by case basis, like Eric was saying, you know, when something arises through the business, you know, you probably want to consult one, um, you know, you try rocket lawyer first and see if there's something, that can be done there. But uh, other than that, you may need to contact one that's either local or in the state uh, that you're dealing with. Yeah. My new bromance dude, buddy, Scott Boston. How about you? <laughs> new bromance. No. Uh, oh, yeah, look, yeah. I, look, I'm not stepping on Zano's toes. First of all, I'm dealing with him at boot camp. The guy knows martial arts. Look, I'm not getting in between you and Mike. Okay. I'm just saying on this, round table. Oh, I see what you're saying. Taking yes. that jolt of happiness a little bit further. Mike, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> He's willing. <laughs> uh, I, I would have to say that I, I'm kind of in, uh, in a situation currently what Eric just described. This has been, you know, a side hustle for us for the last three years. And now I'm trying to get uh, some things organized. So it's gotten to the point where uh, I want to be a little bit more protected, as Eric said, and, you know, uh, some of the legal issues with, uh, setting up, you know, long-term planning. So I just initiated the discussion with an attorney, uh, uh, to do that. And then, uh, otherwise my, my, you know, exposure to attorneys has been limited to this point. I have had some assistance in setting up an LLC. Um, but that's, that's about it where, where I am. And I think it is a case by case basis. Uh, you know, I think, People have had some issues, although the beauty of this business is, is relatively few issues, even with, you know, many, many, many customers and land contracts. So that's, that's another beautiful thing in this business that I compare to other people all the time, especially I have a good friend who does duplexes and it seems like she's talking to her uh, lawyer every week regarding some issue. So that's uh, one of the reasons I like it. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Mimi? Well, I've always had Rocket Lawyer, a subscription, and um, LG Pass is great because it has all the different states' templates for the deeds, so I've never really had to worry about the deed, the document templates. For instance, in, um, in Florida, you have to have two witnesses sign for each person, whereas in other states, you don't, so you've got to kind of watch that your deeds are, are, have the right wording in them, right? But Rocket Lawyer has always been great for me to help determine what the grantor or grantee clauses should be because, you know, you find every situation imaginable. It's not always a husband or a wife or a single person. Um, but I do know of investors that also hire as a, a VA, an abstractor or someone with abstractor or paralegal experience to do that type of thing, to uh, look for clear title and to look at the grantor or grantee clauses. I've been looking for someone with that type of experience myself to move away from Rocket Lawyer, just have someone I can run the deeds through when they're not cut and dry situations. Um, the person will come eventually. You know, they'll, I'll have to pay them more an hour, but they're, you know, a, a educated uh, service, right? So that's okay. 
that's, that's my plan is to move more towards a, a VA that has abstract and clear legal experience. And for as the only reason I really needed attorney experience is to help me with some of those odd grantor and grantee clauses in the deeds. All right, great. Somebody's got the emergency alert going on on their phone. I don't know who that is. Hey. Do you hear that? Do you guys hear that? Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me. I hear it. Okay. I hear it. Well, Somebody in Tornado go, Alley, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly Scott is in an area where it's probably getting a lot of rain. So let's give Scott Todd the last word on this. Is it bad? Is it like a bad sound? Yeah, it just sounds like, a, like one of those emergency alerts. Wow. Okay. I mean, well, it doesn't sound might, like the dumb and dumber sound. Like, you know, that might, you be, something on, you know? It might be my, something with my microphone, but, uh, okay. So look, here's the deal. The deal is, is that, um, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Maybe it's, is it bad? Yeah, it's you, bad. You keep going. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold cause, on. cause he just lit up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, it's him because he's on mute. So it was him. Yeah. All right. Did I fix it? I think he fixed it. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So like, here's the deal. Um, I really haven't used an attorney too much, right? Like I've used an attorney sporadically for certain things, like strategically. And in like, uh, like I don't have an attorney that's, that's on speed dial, right? Like it, it, it's, it's been for a certain purpose and then it's over. So um, I've used an attorney to kind of walk me through the probate process in a current, uh, in a, in a specific state, like, what can I do? What can I not do? How does it work? And that was actually a free consultation that they offered. So I gave them some deeds and said, like, here's some scenarios I would run into. How would, you know, like, what would I need to do in order to clean this stuff up? And they kind of walked me through the process of it. And then I never used them again, but it's in my back pocket. So like, if I ever decide that I want to try to help someone solve their probate issue, then I'll go do that. The, um, the other component is like, I've had an attorney where uh, I wanted them to review something definitely or create something like Mark said, like to have an LLC put together or something else for my business. It was a very strategic strike. So boom, but I've never had an attorney that's on speed dial or standby. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that, I think that, if I were doing other types of real estate, if I were doing, you know, multifamily where I know that it's without a doubt that I'm going to get sued, well, you better believe that I'm going to have an attorney on speed dial. If I were a real estate developer and, you know, like I was like contracts were flying all over the place, I would have an attorney, a real estate attorney on speed dial. If I'm investing, you know, millions of dollars into a project, yeah, someone else is going to look at this and it's not going to be me. It's going to be an attorney who's going to get me out of it if need be. So, you know, I think you have to really look at the risk that's there. And that is really one of the beautiful things about this. You can, you can overcomplicate this business, but if you just keep it so clean and simple, it's just a great business. No, absolutely. And, you know, my first thought when you're thinking, when you're talking, Scott, was shouldn't we sort of put a lot of peer pressure on Tate and have him go to law school. Number one, he's got the time, <laughs> he's got the money. And number three, we could all benefit from it. But we don't really like, even if he did that, there wouldn't be enough business for him to justify just in the land community to be an attorney. And what's interesting is that now with the revamp toolkit, we do have a new module tax and legal corner with Mark Kohler, whom is a JD and CPA. So we are getting those tax and legal questions answered by a professional where it used to be like someone would ask us and we'd, we'd have to shy away from it because we can't give tax or legal advice. So Mark Kohler being uh, a part of the community now and his daughter, Sydney in flight school is a huge, huge asset uh, to the entire community. So Jeannie, does that help? Yes. And um, Scott Todd really answered it well because that's kind of what I was wondering is, do I have a attorney on speed dial? And I haven't needed one really. So, and, and I'm thinking, I was thinking about the cost, you know, cause I'm looking at my, my expenses. So that was really well said, but also Scott Todd addressed a probate question on a round table a while back. So I find a lot of times these round tables, you guys answer the questions that 
that we may have already. So um, yeah, so I, I really appreciate the, the feedback. All right, great, great. Well, it's like, a, it's like a, an amazing gift today for Eric, the technician Peterson, and Mike Zen Master Zeno, because they're off the hook. They don't need to give their tip of the week. So I'm going to stop streaming live on Facebook. And please uh, go and listen to the podcast. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. And then send us a screenshot of the review, of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. But I'm really excited for today's tip of the week because it's Bearland Aaron's tip. Bearland, what do you got? Oh, you're on mute. There you go. I remember the days when Safari had this really pretty 3D kind of a thumbnail view of bookmarks that you could add to it. And then, uh, and more recently, it's still there. It's just kind of not as pretty because they're all just square, you know, bookmarks and they're not three-dimensional anymore and everything. Um, and I really miss that. And then I ran across this Chrome extension since I've started using Chrome a lot. And it's called Speed Dial, FVD, as in like Frank, Victor, David. And uh, it is a kind of a 3D book, visual bookmark thing. And you can add, I think, unlimited bookmarks to it. It just becomes this kind of curved wall of bookmarks. And it's kind of neat because not only do you have your bookmarks there, but you can set up um, different sets of them. Like if you wanted a set of bookmarks for each county you did, you could do that or specific business ones. Um, and then not only that, but there's a very subtle little arrow over on the left of the screen. And if you click it, it scoots the page open over and you have access to all your uh, Google apps. So if you use pages or uh, not pages, um, sheets or, you know, the Google Drive and your Gmail and that sort of thing, you can click on it right there from from that page. So it, it makes um, it makes your opening tab of Chrome really useful and really efficient to use for your business. All right. Great tip. And, you know, ultimately I think that Eric Peterson will have to give it the, is it aesthetically pleasing kind of graphic designer, you know, seal of approval because of Eric's like, you know, it's very googly, which means that it's not very pretty compared to say things on, you know, like Mac apps, then I'll probably have to delete it from the Chrome store. But that's not here or there, Bearland Aaron. I think it's a great tip. No, I think Eric will like it visually. And um, you can add different backgrounds and stuff to it too with the second extension. But it's, it's pretty. That's why I like it. Because I like the, the Mac look of stuff. I hate the flat Google, Microsoft flatness. Drives me nuts. Very, very cool. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. Um, I want to thank every, all the round table panelists for taking, uh, you know, time out of their very, well, let's just face it, not really busy days, but fairly, you know, busy days, especially you, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. And, um, but I want to thank you anyways for doing that. I want to thank certainly um, everyone that's uh, engaging with us on Facebook Live, uh, liking the videos, hopefully sharing the videos. We really, really appreciate it. And, um, you know, again, please learn more about flight school. Don't be shy. Get on a call with the Zen master and dude buddy. Um, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. And Scott Todd, are, are we good time-wise? We're, we're, yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. Well, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. 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 For nine oh, wow. people, it's not so bad. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> oh my gosh! I just, we're I all, just, we're also just shaking our heads like in just shame. Maybe we need to practice. No, it won't help. I just noticed that there's two tables. <laughs> Well, one is Scott Bossman says Tate Litchfield, and then he's we my mini. Yeah. He's my mini me. I know, I know that. <laughs> You're my mini me. <laughs>
You know, me, 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 uh, me I want to congratulate you. Mark, me, 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 I, I didn't see your name. Was... <laughs> Wait, what, what were you going to say? Yeah. Mimi won't understand this, but I do want to say that um, the the love affair that you had with Scott on this uh, podcast was kind of a little uncomfortable. And like, at least when Mimi, after we, we called you out on it, at least when Mimi came on, you should have been like, I'm happy now because Mimi's here. But you're like, hey, Mimi's here. Great. You'll have to well, watch okay, the replay. You know, yeah. Again, but Mimi has to shiny watch the object. She's so not the shiny wondering. object that Scott is. Maybe the old undesirable people should like boycott. I don't know. And then we come back and we're happy. We want to be special. <laughs> all right, fine. You know what? When we hang up, I'm going to put all of you in the gratitude journal as I normally do. I just felt like it was just, it was just pretty cool to surprise to see Scott. His, you know, the fact that he, you know, was able to, to replace his income quit his job it always you know is is special mimi did it we celebrated mimi it was a big big deal but you know okay all right congratulations it's, you know, it's the scott todd celebration every day come on scott and it's a scott todd celebration every day no i don't want to be celebrated that's not it it's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, just i noticed that, that it's like oh my god so scott bossman is here and i'm like hmm I mean, I'm just speaking for everybody. I know how they feel. Like, look at Zeno. He's not going to he, – he's going to be like, eh, well, you know. I know, he, my, I know, I know Mike's not happy with it. Hey, Mark, they, he sounds a little jealous to me. I don't know. Oh, we're going to deal with it over chicken sandwiches. Hey, Mark, you know, I get it. I'm with I'm you. Gonna... Because everybody else is on here pretty often. We don't get to see Boston very often. So you're like, hey, what a surprise. I'm going to – I'm playing devil's advocate against Thank Scott you. Todd today. Hey, let's I'm just excited. roll off the red carpet. It's for exciting to be here. It's exciting to be here. Fine. Mark, can I point out two backgrounds here? I, 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 number one, Mimi's, that is incredibly awesome, that background. I, I, it looks like you're hunting terrorists. Like, really? Like, what is that? The location? Are they in Florida? Because we're going to Florida. People are telling me county names and not and having to look them up every time. So now I can just go look at the board. I hope there's nothing wrong in Florida. We're all coming. <laughs> i got to tell you, though, uh, Beryl and Aaron, I love this tip you gave because the whole reason I carry this iPad around is because it has all of these favorites for all my counties, right? But I gotta tell you that Chrome extension, it's better looking than the iPad. And if I can categorize them by county instead of just alphabetical, like this one. I yeah, can... you can have sets. Sets and have a little tab for each set along the top. I think you'll like it. That's S E T S Zeno sets. That's cool. All right. Well, since we're all <laughs> on the on the round table today, um, I think it's only appropriate that we end with the Land Geek song. So let me see if this works here. Hopefully everyone can hear it. Can you guys hear this? Yep. Wait. If you want to have a barrel of money, here are the Passive Income Podcasts. They're funny. Your life don't have to be bleak. If it's freedom you seek, choose Land Geek. Omnipresent Mark Podolsky will reach you. Scott Todd takes flight and comes in to teach you. You will learn all the rest from the round table's best with Land Geek. Mimi won't let you forget to price land right. Eric makes your system tight to the last bite. Bear Land gives you a peek of land with lakes or with creeks through Land Geek. Then there's Tate, he'll help you research the right spot. Jeannie makes your land deals all sound hot. You're on your way with raw land, cause they're all holding your hand with Land Geek. Mike Zeno helps you light the fire for deal flow. Scott Bossman gives you faith to know you'll grow. Even if you're green, you'll succeed when you follow their lead. The Land Geeks. Yes, you just can't go wrong. They might even sing you a song. The Land Geeks. I, I, I never tired. I never tired. Whoa. That was awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's I, I never tire of it to to the point where like I think Scott and Mike should sing it at at boot camp. Yep, I agree. But, is Aileen going to be there? I she gonna be? Don't think so. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Am I, am I the only one who like listens to that thing like every day? <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> it's just so catchy. It's it's between Kanye and Aileen's land gig song. <laughs> oh. What you should do before you before you go into like a coffee shop, someone should walk in and put down a speaker and they start playing it, then you walk in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you the land geek shirt on. Yeah. That's the yeah. land geek. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, I know Scott's got to jump. All right. See you guys. See you. Bye.